Hey, thanks for joining us here today. Uh, what are we doing? Brian. <laughs> you can't even get my head in. I know. <laughs> anyway, what are you doing? You're getting all the stuff together to cut some bales or something? I'm splitting some bales. Hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Splitting some bales for the first section. It's not even a full bale section. It's only 27 inches. So I need four bales that are 27 inches wide to put in that to stack up. Okay. And uh, if if anyone is wondering, we do not have gutters hooked up yet for our. Uh, even though we've been getting a lot of rain, we have not had time yet to hook up the gutters, but this one tank is full but for now we are just uh filling up our rv tanks with water so we don't have to worry about the pipe breaking and all that so that's that's what's happening with that so now we'll we'll uh He's going to show me how to cut a bale in half or something to that nature. <laughs> something to that. <laughs> Make a little table. So after hours of prep work, <laughs> I think we're finally ready. These things are heavy. How much are, How much would you say that weighs? I think they said 70 to 90 pounds or... Um, 70, give or take. I don't know. 70 to nine, 90 pounds. I don't know if this, this is the best lighting, but it's really hot and humid. July 17th. Ooh, in two days, it's our um, anniversary of our first date, which was July 19th, 1999. Mm. 21 years? Is that 21 years? Uh, yeah. 22? 22? Hey. I found a, a stick man. <laughs> I don't think we need that. <laughs> you're filming. <laughs> it doesn't work unless you're filming. Um, yeah, show them that little thing you made. It's cool. So. What's it called? Uh, you could call it a bale rasp or a bale sanding block or whatever you want to call it. You just take some metal lath, uh -huh. attach it to a block of wood, and it becomes like a sander. I'm not going to do it yet. I'll clean these up afterwards. But, I mean, it, when you've got kind of yeah. messy edges of bales, it cleans them up pretty quickly. And you can you can take some away if you want, if you really want to kind of shave it down. Or you can just kind of clean it up a little bit if you want. But it's it's pretty nice. So I think we're ready to get started. We, <laughs> as in Brian is going to demonstrate. We actually went to a workshop, a straw bale workshop, but well, they might have, I think they did a different method than we're well, doing here. Well, most people would do this with baling twine, you know, the strings that are on here already, but we're not doing yes. And they would tie knots. We're not tying knots. We're using... We're using this, uh, poly, what's it called? Poly straps? Poly strapping. And this is what we're going to use to go up and over, too, to kind of squeeze the bales down. Mm -hmm. But as long as we're using it for that, we're going to use it to tie bales as well. So it's kind of the same technique as the, as the strings. We just don't have to tie knots. Instead of tying knots, we use buckles. And, uh... So you don't always need a full bale, and we're going to need partial bales in some places, like around doors and windows. So places. that's why he's cutting these to go. I believe that these are going around the door area. Yeah. Okay. So we use buckles and a tensioner to take this strapping tensioner. material. That's a tensioner? Yeah. Or uh, it might be called a windlass windless but, I think I'd rather call it a tensioner but the idea is the same you get enough cord to be able to kind of push through the bale and go around both sides so that you're now making new ties mm -hmm. and when you make your new ties 
such as you've tied your two bales into two new bales, then you can cut the old strings and the two bales will come apart as two new bales that have already been tied. In our case, strapped. So that's it. So I'm measuring the distance. So I want a 27 inch bale. This is not an exact science, of course, but I'm looking for 27 inches. So I go to kind of where the edge of the, uh, where the edge of the baling twine is. And I measure over 27 inches and just a little. So you put it where? Right in when you measure, I try and measure, I gotta get, I gotta look. Okay. Kind of where the edge of the twine is, because it's hard to measure the edge okay. of a bale, because it's all. So you want it to be twenty-seven. Over the place. The bale you're cutting so is going to be twenty-seven. 27 inch, so I'm going to take this. Can you I'm just poke just, it in there, right? I'll just mark with a pencil. So that's one spot, and then I'll do the same thing down here. Again, it's tough to measure the edge of the bale, but so right there. None of this is... So what is this thing called? This metal thingy. So this is a bale needle. We borrowed this from Bill. Oh, that! Oh, thank you, Bill. So from the it's really just a poker. Uh, in most cases, you know, again, if you were using baling twine, there are notches in this baling needle to kind of hold the oh. twine while you push it through and, and all that. But for okay. us, it's a little more, it's a little simpler. We actually just kind of, just kind of put this on the end and just push. I can't remember. Is this the way Bill split yeah. his bells yeah. too? You want to try and keep track of what side you've got and all that business. So he's putting it, the material, in the mark he made underneath the twine. And then pushing it through and to the other side. And you want to make sure that it's all Uh, not twisted around, right? You want it to be like flat, not as twisted much as, possible, yeah. as much as possible. And then so the he's bringing it around to, around to make sure he has enough to go. And have extra. Oh, I need the scissors. And he's going to cut it with the scissors. So he's cutting that. So. Make sure I get the right side here. Yeah. Okay. Cut. So <laughs> he cut. this is going to make one. This one's going to go the other way. Uh huh. Okay. So that's what's going to make your your separate piece here. Yep. So he's really new at this. I think. How many have you done? Two. Two. So he's still uh, getting practiced, or getting practice at this. So and you have to leave the right amount of leftover to be able to use the tensioner tool. If you don't have enough leftover, you can't grab it, and it's yeah. But if you have too much, then you're wasting a bunch. So yeah, I'm, you don't want to waste a I'm bunch. Trying to get but... better at that. That's the hard part. Is trying to like I I know that I already left this one like way too long. So I'm gonna try and do this. So for now, but in the beginning, it'd be better to have too much than too little. If you come up short, then you that you're, piece is wasted. You have yeah. To, so you you would so have to do it again anyway. Those are the two. So these are three string bales, but with what we're, the way we're doing them, we're going to make them into two strap okay. bales, right? Because the strapping is a little different than the strings. Okay. Um, so we're going to tie one strap near the top string and one strap just inside the top string and just inside the bottom string. We'll turn a three string into a two string. So this is one set of strings to do two bales up here. Yep. Now I'm gonna do the same thing down here for the second, and then I'm gonna lay this thing down and I'm gonna do the buckles and actually tighten them. So I'm gonna do the same thing down in this other position. That I, same thing I just did. Okay. Night. Yesterday we had a big rainstorm. Today, Swarms of bugs. Ah! Oh, oh my gosh. In the eyeball. It got me. Ah, okay. Trying to fight, fight my way back. Oh my gosh. That one literally. Oh, my skin is crawling right now. I got to be honest. Oh my Lord. Oh. 
Oh, oh my gosh, it's bad. It's bad. I gotta get back. It's really gross. Okay. Now, so now it's time to flip it. I'm just laying it down because it'll be easier to do the actual tensioning, right? Mm -hmm. But I have the, 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 the pieces all where I need them. So, for example. So I'm just, this is gonna be a new, this is gonna be the new strap, which will replace this string. So I'm coming just inside of it yep. from the edge. And I'll do the same thing over here. This strap will replace this string and I'll move it just inside. And the middle string will go away. It's gonna become a two string, but it'll be two strap bail. Okay. Okay, so now it's time for a buckle. So I need four buckles to do this. So you start on one side. You fold it. So where did you learn to do this? Uh, online and I mean, there's there's videos on how to use these tools and Bill did this stuff too. And so that's what the first side looks like. You kind of just wrap these strings over these buckles. Okay. And again, there's there's a bunch of videos online on how about about how to use these tools and everything. So, the other side, same thing. You kind of, you bring it up through, you catch it on the buckle that way. So it's now sort of, you know, that's how it, that's how it attaches, like that. Yep. So now it needs to be pulled tight, and that's what the tensioner's for. Okay, so move over. And you gotta make sure it's all, like, uh, not the Yeah, this is where you wanna kinda make sure it's in the right position and not all twisted and no, goofy. No and, no twist Because, I mean, this is my new string coming now. So, I can do this by hand at first. Just kind of, just kind of tighten this up a little. Now, I'm doing with my hand right now what the tool is going to eventually do. I'm just pulling this tight, see? And one of the little uh, tricks of using this thing as, on bales is what I found out the first one I did was I pulled it way too tight, I think. So I kind of bulged the bale oh, yeah. a bunch. So there's a kind of, so what I learned is I want to pull this tight basically until the, the uh, existing strings, the way the bale is currently tied, when they start to become just the slightest bit loose, it's like, okay, well, I've gone past that point, right? Mm -hmm. so, so you just kind of wind this into position so that you can now, this is the tightening. So this is what the tool does now. See how it's pulling it tight now? Yep. So again, as soon as I, I mean, I basically want to make it as tight as it was, but not like crazy more. See, it's already, this bail, that, that string yeah. is already sort of. That's already pretty tight. So I'll just stop. And normally this tool would cut this actually too but I'm purposely not doing that. And this will be more important. I can probably start cutting it for these, but uh, when we do the, when we do the strapping up and over the wall, yeah. we're actually gonna wanna tighten it up multiple times. Like we'll tighten it and then it'll settle a little bit and then we'll tighten it again, then we'll tighten it again. We might do it multiple times. Mm -hmm. So you wanna avoid cutting this strap because if you cut this strap to some length, you won't be able to do this again. You need extra strap for that to work, okay. right? Yep. So when we do the ones on the walls up and down, we will purposely not cut these straps. So I'm actually practicing that now. I'm not cutting the straps, even though generally you would. So that's one side of the 27 inch bale. Here's the other side of the 27 inch bale, the new bale. So you just do that same thing four times. Four times. Yep. Okay, okay so, okay, right? huh? So I've got all four buckles in place. And I've got, I'm going to leave, you know, just because I'm not sure yet what I'm doing, I'm leaving a good bit of extra kind of tail on these straps because I don't know, again, you can only do that tensioning if you have enough strap to make it work. So if I cut that down too short, I won't be able to grab it again. So but until I know that I'm doing it right, I'm cutting these things off, but I'm leaving, but leaving enough. I'm leaving them to work yeah, with. to where if I had to grab them again, I could. I don't, I don't think I have to, but until I get kind of better at this, I'm going to be careful. So, so I have 
two new straps for each bale, right? Right. So right now, even though there's still three strings, the original three strings are still on here, it's tied into two separate bales now. Yeah. So I can now cut these strings. And the way you want to cut these strings, in case you ever want to use them for anything, is you cut them by the knot. So you cut them by the knot so that they're still, eh, so they're still kind of usable if you wanted to use them. Now that's, that's even more important if you're actually using baling twine to tie your that, bales. That's called the, the baling twine. Yeah. So you're cutting them by the knot near the knot near the knot in case you so that, need to use so them. that the string is still fairly usable if you cut it away from the knot then you've not made it it's it's not as usable it's not the knot is not way, so usable so i just cut all three of the strings okay. the original strings so i can actually kind of right right so there's one string gone where are you putting those i'm just gonna I just kind of wrap them up and save them just in case. Now these can be good for various things, right? So see, the reason I cut them at the knot is because now that you have a long string with a oh, knot in it. Cool. So you want to cut it close to the knot to make it as usable as possible in the future. Again, if you're tying your bales with baling twine, this stuff that I just cut off of there could be used to tie another bale. A right, short bale. Yeah. Oh, so now, that's we're not why actually doing that, but baling twine is good it. for various things. So I just yeah. cut it all apart, right? Yep. So now, now it's, it's only time being to separate. Held. So now the way, so now I've got two bales. Boom. Ta-da. This is my 27-inch bale, and that's the leftover, which in this case is about uh, 18 inches, and maybe it'll fit in another location, or maybe we'll even cut it into something smaller. You tend not to want to go smaller than like a right. foot. Right, and so in some of those places where you might need some extra, you can use... Um, I mean, so at least you'll have those together in case you need to. If you had seen the first one, you'd know that I've improved my technique because when I did the first one, this 27 inch bale, yeah, I had pulled these these straps so tight that it was oh, all bunched yeah. and it was all bulging at the yeah. edges. And everything. So and you don't want to do, do it too tight. That's when this rasp comes in. You know, you can kind of this rasp just oh, cleans cool. up. That thing's pretty cool. It's it's quick and it's easy. So even see you see this side. Yeah. This is messy, but I don't want to get that straw everywhere. But but the idea is when you go to put this in place, if you want two bales to meet up kind of nicely or you want this to meet up at one of the bucks or something, you know, touch one of the bucks, which in this case it is. Yeah. You want the edge of this to be sort of flat. You take this where it's bulging out and just kind of do that. And it just takes off, you know, just enough. And you can kind of clean up the edges and the corners. And I mean, it's not yeah. perfect or anything. But Bugs. But it does a decent <laughs> job. If it's really bulged out messy, you can kind of clean it up real quick. So that's a decent looking bale right there. That's one of the bales that will go in that spot. Thank you for so I need four of these. that demonstration. <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing or sharing with a friend. And click the bell notification so you never miss any of our videos. We really appreciate every view and comment. And if you're looking for other ways to support us, please check out the links in the description box. See, See you in the, the next, next video! video.